There's no argument that the job market right now is pretty tough, especially for junior engineers and students. We've been seeing that a lot of job descriptions have been asking for multiple years of work experience, even for entry-level roles. So what the heck do you do about it to differentiate yourself? And I tell you the answer is not projects, and I will explain why not projects. I also want to break down seven better ways junior engineers can start building experience even without having a formal job. As someone who has been working in tech for close to 20 years now, and as a retired software engineering manager from Meta, it kind of drives me up the wall every time one of those videos pop up titled like, these coding projects will give you an unfair advantage. And I'm thinking, well, if you have done any hiring or managing, you would probably never make videos like that. Then it did hit me. I actually haven't ever seen a single thing software engineering manager on YouTube. I think I saw one from Uber and usually managers from companies I haven't really heard of but never from a fan company. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you know anyone else who has been a manager at a fan company, leave a name in the comment and I would love to check them out. Going back to the projects, there are tons of videos out there talking as if working on projects is like magic ticket to getting hired at tech companies. And it is tempting to think if I just click ahead and find the one magical project idea that will land me a job. But honestly, focusing on projects as your path to getting hired is one of the dumbest ways to waste your time, in my opinion. And here's the thing, projects are great for learning. They help you understand new concepts, practice coding, and build up your skills as a programmer. But when it comes to getting a job, that's a whole different story. Why do hiring managers not care about your projects? Imagine you need brain surgery and you're looking for a doctor. I come to you and say, hey, I went to medical school and I've done five simulations of brain surgery on the computer in a control environment, aka like your Git or my school's lab. Let me operate on your brain. If I said that as a doctor, would you let me operate on you? Probably not. I wouldn't. Now, hospitals have residency programs for a reason. These recent medical grads don't just dive into solo surgeries. First, they watch procedures, then assist, and only after enough supervised practice do they do their own surgeries. And the tech equivalent of a residency is an internship. People ask me on comments all the time, I'm studying computer science or machine learning or data science, what should I focus on? And I say, go get an internship. Now, coding isn't usually life or death like brain surgery, but then again, you did see what happened with CrowdStrike, a bug that almost took down the world. If you have been living under a rock, check out my video covering the CrowdStrike outage. And because companies don't want to hire full-time junior engineers only to see them taking down the entire product, they usually look for people who have worked with real life production code, dealing with real users and real stakes not just code that runs on a local machine or some virtual environment that has no direct impact on actual users or to automate your own life. So do hiring managers even look at GitHub or portfolios? And the answer is no, and here's why. 99% of time, the code doesn't even run. When I was hiring interns for the first time at WhatsApp, I used to review candidates a lot more carefully, partly because I didn't have a lot of experience hiring and I wasn't sure what to look for. Also, since I was the 19th engineer at WhatsApp, we were still pretty small and we didn't get that many candidates. So I had the luxury to spend more time on individual candidates. Back then, I would actually read some of the code on GitHub, but I quickly realized that almost none of it actually ran. Variables would be hard coded or functions would be missing. There's also another reason recruiters don't look at GitHub. According to a recent study, recruiters spend on average just about seven seconds glancing at a resume before tossing it away. They get hundreds, sometimes thousands of resumes for a single role. So do they have time to dig into your GitHub and review your code? Probably not. Okay, if projects and GitHubs aren't the answer, what is it? I'm gonna share seven effective strategies to build an experience that will actually make a difference in your job search. I'm going to evaluate each strategy based on four criteria rated on a scale of one to five. First is impact. 
How impressive is this to a hiring manager? Two is accessibility. How easy is it to get access or get involved with this type of experience? Three is time investment. How much time does this require? Last but not least, earnings potential. Is there an opportunity to earn additional income? For example, working on a GitHub project that doesn't fully run, zero on impact, five on accessibility, time investment would be one to three depending on the project, and earnings potential is zero, which brings to a total of six to eight points. I have ranked these strategies and saved the best for the last. Plus, I have two bonus strategies specifically for those interested in becoming a machine learning engineer, which I'll cover at the end of the list. So let's dive in. First category of the projects are to start your own business. In the US, becoming a sole proprietor is pretty straightforward. I'm not a lawyer, so I won't be covering the details of setting up your own company. Google your local regulations for that. If you do decide to go this route, there are a few ways you can do this. So strategy number seven is to build an iOS app. Impact here is three to five. Creating an iOS app can really stand out, especially if you manage to pass the Apple's tough review process. This can be a big plus if you are targeting roles that do require iOS skills like becoming an iOS developer. Accessibility is two because getting an iOS app approved can be challenging, again, because of the Apple strict guidelines. I gave one for the time investment for the same reason building an app that meets the iOS standards can take a lot of time and effort. Earnings potential can be negative one or zero. If you do decide to register as a business, you might have some business costs and monetizing through an app purchases or ads can be an option, but that is a lot of additional work. I'm just gonna call it zero for most people unless you're really trying to make a buck. So the total comes out to five to seven points. Next on the list is to build an Android app. The impact here would be 3.5 to 4.5. On Android app might not be as impressive as an iOS app in some cases, but it's still a solid choice, especially since it's easier to get past the Android review. That's why I think it's a little bit less impressive unless you're going for an Android app developer role. For the same reason, accessibility is three. Time investment is a one. It's still a time consuming project earning potential. Again, there may be some costs involved with setting up the business registration. You might make a little bit of money, but it's not guaranteed. So total comes out to be 5.5 to 7.5 points. Next is building a website or a Chrome extension. Impact here is two to three. This depends on the relevance to the job that you're eyeing again. Accessibility would be four because building a website or a Chrome extension is generally much easier than developing an app. Time investment would be three to four. The time required will depend on how complex your project is. Earnings potential is the same. Making money from websites or extensions is possible, but the income can be pretty minimal. That brings the total to about 8 to 11 points. All right, let's dive into volunteering as the next category. This can be a great way to gain experience and make a real impact. There are a number of ways you can do this. So strategy number four is to volunteer for a business. Impact here is two because volunteering for a local business can be a little bit better than just doing projects. If you're working with small companies that need technical support, it could show that you're willing to get hands-on experience. You can work with clients, communicate real requirements, meet deadlines, and etc. For accessibility, I gave it 2.5. Finding a business that's open to volunteers might take some effort, but it is definitely doable. I recommend you reach out to various companies in your local area or online. Time investment would be a three out of five. You have some flexibility here since it's a volunteer position. You can quit if it's not working out. Earning potential is obviously zero because volunteering usually doesn't come with a paycheck and it will be zero for the remainder of the volunteer roles. So here the total is 7.5. Number three is volunteering for a nonprofit organization. Impact here is three. Volunteering for a more well-known nonprofit can boost your impressiveness factor. Accessibility is two. It might be tougher to get a spot with a high profile nonprofit due to competition. Time investment would be three. So total here is eight. Number two is working on open source projects. Impact is three. Again, contributing to a well-known, really popular open source project 
projects can really make your resume pop, especially if your contribution is more significant. Accessibility is three here. Anyone can jump into open source projects, but getting your code accepted can be more challenging. Time investment would be two to four, depending on the complexity of the feature that you're working on. So the total here would be eight to 10 points. Now here is what you have been waiting for. The number one option, really the best one is internship. If you're looking for the best way to build experience, hands down, it's internship. Impact here would be five plus. I would give it six if I could. Internships are the gold standard when it comes to experience. Remember when I compared it to medical residency earlier? Internships do really offer real world exposure and are the most validating for hiring managers to believe in you as a potential candidate. Accessibility here is one, landing an internship can be tough. Time investment would be a one because internships usually require a long-term commitment. You will be dedicating a significant amount of time and it's usually not very flexible. But on the upside, the earnings potential is a five plus again. Internships often come with really great pay. For example, in California, the average hourly wage for a software engineering intern is about $24.47 according to ZipRecruiter. But this is only average, right? From my experience, I have seen interns get way more money than that. And it's not just big tech companies, but startups can pay really well as well. So this brings a total to 12 plus points. If you're aiming for a role in the tech industry, an internship is by far the most valuable experience that you can get. If you want tips on landing internships, let me know in the comments and I can make a video about it. I said earlier in the video that I'm going to share bonus strategies for people who are interested in machine learning roles, but I'm sorry I ran out of time, so I'm going to have to record a separate video about that. If you're interested in AI engineering or machine learning type of roles and you want to gain experience without actually having a full-time job, go ahead and watch this video. Otherwise, YouTube thinks you should watch this one next. I'll see you there.